everyone this is hope from pros before bros and yeah i'm making a second video tonight uh, i'm on a roll i'm on a roll after having kind of a huge dry spell excuse me you guys know how my chair gets sometimes it will does that little curvature thing and I, I just get uncomfortable and i start rambling like i'm doing right now but anyways um, yeah, I'm doing a second video tonight to talk to you guys about some of the books I picked up in the past two months since my hiatus. <laughs> um, very unexpected, but we will just jump right into that. So, um, first off, I'm going to talk about some of the books that I'm currently reading right now, which I'm excited to talk to you guys about. Moving stuff around as I'm talking to you. How corny is that? Um, first book that I am currently reading is a book that was actually recommended um, by another booktuber by the name of Murphy Napier. I hope I said her last name right. Um, she has an awesome book too. If you guys have a chance, go check her out. Um, but the book is On Luna Time by Amber Crawley and it is a time travel book. It's a young adult time travel. It follows a girl by the name of Vanessa Marshall who has been in and out of foster care throughout her life um and then on her 18th birthday she receives a card or letter from her mother um her strange mother saying that she needs to go on her 18th birthday to a pier and jump off the pier um she's not going to die from doing so but there is going to be something very magical that happens that's going to explain everything about her life and about why um, she wasn't with her when maybe she needed her the most. And it involves time travel to uh, 1949, which is, you know, a period of time that I always enjoy reading about. I've always enjoyed reading about the 1940s and the 1960s to be exact. So I'm really looking forward to diving more into this book. <laughs> Get it? Diving? Port? I'm going to shut up. But anyways, this is what the book looks like. It is really a beautiful cover. It reminds me a lot of something, you know, um, Vincent Van Gogh would have painted particularly. I don't know why. It just does, I guess, that um, impressionist look to it. But the really cool thing is, if you guys listen to the audio, Murphy actually is the one that narrates the book. So she was asked to narrate this book as a job, and it turned out she actually enjoyed reading this book. She said it was a very quick read, and as you can tell, it's a fairly, fairly thin volume, but I believe there's a sequel that's coming out at some point, so I'm really excited about reading that. Next book that I have that I'm starting to read tonight is actually of Monsters and Madness and it is by Jessica Verde. I hiccuped. You guys missed that, didn't you? It's by Jessica Verde and it actually <sighs> did something else. I yawned. This is what happens when you turn 30, you guys, or over 30 in my case, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, but this is a book that is loosely based on the story of, um, what is it? I forgot already. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which I'm interested in reading this. It also has themes of Edgar Allan Poe. Um, Edgar is in this and also another guy named Allan Poe. Um, and it follows the story of Annabelle Lee, who is sent to live with her cousin. Um, and she wants to be a surgeon. And of course, during the 1800s, women surgeon were not really present. Um, it was frowned upon. A woman was considered nothing more than a wife or a mother. Um, so this is kind of a thriller so to speak I haven't really gotten a chance to dive too much into it. I read a couple pages today but it does sound really interesting I will tell you it is a hard book to find um, apparently it was released in 2014 only as a hardback and it was just recently introduced as an ebook there is no paperback version of this book at all um, I had to buy this book used on marketplace on Amazon so I went with one more, my more reputable um, sellers, second used book seller says on there that I use all the time. And <sighs> the one 
was able to get for five dollars with shipping so I, I was okay with that now the ebook is available I think it was like two dollars if I remember correctly I just wanted something kind of substantial so I went ahead and picked it up you guys know how I feel about Edgar Allan Poe so <laughs> all right so those are the books I'm currently reading but let's talk about the books that I have picked up in the past two months so Hopping right into it. The first book that I have is actually a mass market book. And I really don't buy mass market books that much because I have such a hard time reading the font. I struggle so hard with reading the font on these, but I couldn't really find this anywhere else um, in a different format, that is. And it's called If I Can't Have You, and it's by Greg Olson and Rebecca Morris. Um, it's about Susan Powell, her mysterious disappearance and the murder of her children. Um, all that are encircled back to her husband, um, her estranged husband at the time. Uh, he ended up dying as well. But you guys might remember this case. It happened quite a few years ago. Um, Susan Powell went missing. It just didn't show up to work one day. The husband was acting very strange. And unfortunately, it ended with his children um, being murdered by him in a, in a horrific fire. Um, I, I struggle sometimes reading these kind of stories because of that. But at the same time, I read a lot of true crime. Um, that was something that I really wanted to go into at one point or another. I really wanted to go into um, crime investigation of some sort. And I just didn't. I, I think I'm too empathetic to do something like that or... You know, I, I just, I would struggle with it emotionally, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I did pick that up. It looks like it's going to be a very interesting read. And the next book that I picked up, I picked up because it's actually a local author. And I haven't really dived, dived, why did I say it? dove into the details of the book? I know it's a recount of uh, Joan of Arc. It's like a retelling of Joan of Arc. It's by Emily A. Duncan, um, Wicked Saints. So it looks like this, and it's almost like a fairy tale um, of sorts, and it has a lot of drama in it. Um, it's about a girl named Nada who hears and hears the whispers of the gods inside her head. A prince surrounded by desperate suitors and deadly assassins, and a monster hidden behind pale, tortured eyes, and a smile that cuts like a knife. So it. it I don't know why, but I just felt like it might be like a Six of Crows reference. I'm so, I still have to read that book. It just kind of reminded me of that premise a little bit without some of the stuff. But I went ahead and picked this up because, like I said, it is a local author. And I try to support as many local authors as I can or any small time art authors that isn't very mainstream. Um, so naturally, I picked this up because I was intrigued by it, but I also wanted to support a local author. So, all right, next book I picked up is kind of a controversial book, and it is Again, But Better by Christina, Christine Riccio. Uh, a lot of people will recognize this book because Christine is a booktuber here in our booktube community. This is her first book that she's released. Um, I've heard mixed reviews about I've heard people say that they liked it, but I heard people say that they didn't like it for a lot of reasons. I try to stay impartial um, and unbiased so I can give that writer, um, that author, an opportunity um, to either shine or, you know, if I waste time on it, I waste time on it. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but it follows the story of a young girl who is a col in college right now in the United States and she kind of falls into a routine and she wants to break away from that routine, kind of put herself out of her comfort, comfort zone and ends up doing um, a residency over in the United Kingdom. So it talks about that. There is a little bit of a magical aspect to it, I believe, it involves time travel. I've been trying to avoid the press too much about this because I don't want to get swept away and have my mind be changed about this book. I really want to give this book a fighting chance if I can. So I picked that up and this book I'm really excited about and 
I found out about it through a podcast. <laughs> and that book is Bad Blood, The Secrets and Lies in the Silicon Valley Startup by John Carew, who is, I believe he works for, I always get mixed up. It's not the Washington Post. It's the New York Times. Um, he basically delivered this story. It's like a bombshell story. If you guys have been following the news, you might have heard of it involving Elizabeth Holmes. And she is the Silicon Valley, um, almost like a Steve Jobs reminiscent person that started a company called Theranos. And every time I say Theranos, you guys, I automatically think of um, Marvel, you know, the, the Avengers Thanos. I always think about that and I'm like, alrighty, this is a shitty company. <laughs> I know, that's terrible. But anyway, she, she's not a very good person. This paints her in a very negative light because um, she starts the Thanos company and gives false accusations or false um, testimonial saying that this product that she has developed, this invention she has de um, developed for blood collection, um, is actually a farce and it turns out that the product doesn't work at all and it was like sent to hundreds and thousands of Walgreens I guess signed up for it and have them in their stores and it was giving post like false reads and telling people that they had these um, diseases such as cancer or sometimes it wasn't even detected at all um, and it's just, it's a huge mess. If you guys haven't heard anything about this case, it's very interesting. Um, and if you're into podcasts, I would go ahead and check out the podcast, The Dropout. Um, it's a seven episode series. It talks about Elizabeth Holmes, um, the origins of Theranos, the makings of basically a, a fraud. And it, it's really interesting. Again, it's called The Dropout, and I believe MSN was the one that wrote um, the content for that. But it's based on this book. Huge controversy. Usually I don't read stuff like this, but I'm like really, really compelled to read about this case um, and just kind of break it down. So that's on my read list, hopefully for July. I got the hiccups and it's hurting so bad. <laughs> okay. We're going to jump into the next book. Um, the next book I picked up that I'm really excited about is With the Fire on High, and it's by Elizabeth Acevedo. Acevedo? I hope I said her name right. I'm so terrible with names. But she is the National Book Award winner. Um, she wrote The Poet X, which is another book I really want to write, read. It's um, broken up in, in prose, so I heard great things about it. Guys, uh, so you have to see the inside of this cover. Isn't that gorgeous? But it follows the storyline of a girl who is, a, she's a teenage girl, and she ended up getting pregnant. Her name is Amoni. She ended up getting pregnant and having a child out of wedlock, and she, to get through her life and to get through the obstacles ahead of her, she throws her love and her passion into cooking, and that's something that she wants to be someday. She wants to be a chef, a world-renowned chef. So as she's having all these issues with not only being a, a single mother and, and just being a teenager, she takes out all her frustrations and all her fears and goes into the kitchen and, and creates these masterpieces, these culinary masterpieces. So I'm really excited about reading this. Um, not only for the diverse representation, but just the story plot itself. I feel like it's a story that we don't really talk about um, often. We, we usually just hear the negative impact of teenage pregnancy. Um, we don't hear anything positive that comes from it. So I'm really excited about reading this book. Hopefully that is a book I read in July. The next book that I have, and you guys probably won't be surprised by this, is the third installment to the Alex and Eliza tri trilogy by Melissa de la Cruz. And it's all for one. And if you guys don't remember me talking about this, I love this trilogy so much. 
Um, I'm not a huge Melissa De La Cruz fan per se. I re tried reading some of her books in the past and I never really got into them. Um, but this this series is amazing. It follows the story of Alexander Hamilton and Elizabeth Seiler, who is his wife. And they, I keep saying I'm flying. <laughs> it's freaking me out. Um, I think it's a ladybug of some sort. But anyways, it follows their life, their marriage, and unfortunately his untimely death. This is the final installment of the series. I'm really excited about reading it, but at the same time, I know it's the inevitable is coming and he's going to die and I'm just like pissed about it. So I've been kind of holding off on reading this, but I really need to get into reading it and just getting it over with. The next books I picked up is actually, I have stickers on this bag, so let's move it a little bit, is from the Dollar Tree. So I went to the Dollar Tree this morning. And I went to pick up, I can't remember what it was. I think it was like random office supplies for work and for home. And I always go into their book section because sometimes they have some really bad books. And sometimes they have some really awesome books for a dollar. And I was actually, I looked out. I found four books that I thought would be interesting. And of course they were all a dollar. Can't beat that, right? Um, so the first book I picked up is Scarlett Epstein Hates It Here, and it's by Anna Breslau, Anna Breslau, and that's what it looks like, and it follows the story of a girl who is like a fan fiction writer, and she has this online community that she's involved with, and over time, her, the TV show that she's a fan fiction writer of gets canceled. I can relate to this because mine ended just recently, like two years ago, Sons of Anarchy. I still miss it so much. But anyways, um, it talks about how she needs to find a place of comfort and she develops another online community of people that are going through the same dilemma she is right now where she is struggling to find something to write about with purpose because of the cancellation and yeah that is the one book that I picked up there picked up three more <clears throat> the next book I picked up is a book called Reaper looks like that kind of a spooky cover and it follows the story of a girl named Rosie Wolf and she um passes away she ends up dying and she's sent back to earth um to basically be the grim reaper so she comes back to earth and she needs to take three lives back with her to the other side um one of those lives is of course a boy and she ends up falling in love with him so i didn't go too into the reading of it i didn't like bust it open and read it real well while i was in the store because it's a dollar I think I could lose a dollar if I absolutely hate it. If I hate it, I could add it to my unhaul pile. It's not that big of a deal. So I did pick it up. And the next book that I picked up, I'm really excited about this book because I've actually read another book that I really loved by this author. And it's Cami Garcia, and it's The Lovely Reckless. They had that as well for a dollar, and it follows um, the story of a 17-year-old girl by the name of Frankie, and she's trying to kind of forget about her path past her boyfriend had passed away, and she just, she, she's trying to find a new purpose in life, and she ends up moving in with her father, who's an undercover cop. And I believe something else happens. I didn't read into the huge detail because I thought, oh, it's Cami Garcia. I'm excited. I'm down for this. I didn't know she had another book out. So I picked that up. Oh, and then the last book I picked up, and was one of those whims, and it's called Summer of Supernovas by Darcy Woods. Paperback. And it is a daughter, it's about a daughter of an expert astrologer, and she ends up falling in love with somebody that is not in her astrology mix, I guess. He doesn't line up in her stars, so to speak. So 
I thought that would be kind of interesting to read that. I haven't heard anything really about it. I know that Bustle recommended this book. So I went ahead and picked this up as well. Again, it's a dollar. I'm not going to lose much on it. If I don't like it, I could throw it in my unhauled box or bag. Whatever happens at the end of the day, right? All right. So that is part one of my haul. I have another part coming up here in the next few minutes, and we'll just jump right into that one. I'll see you guys soon.